from 1984, which was a good year for George Orwell, and uh, 2008, September 17th. <laughs> Look at that. It's the same date as the apocalypse. Remember, that was September 17th. Uh, 2019. Well, look at this. Well, let's zoom in here in a second. I just found this. Uh, so reserves started to rise from uh, 9 billion, basically zero to 47 billion on September 17th, 2008. Um, and it was uh, 11 years later that they exploded again because uh, the federal funds rate was out of control. But anyway, let's zoom back out. So we can see here that from 1984, the beginning of this data on this chart, until September 17th, 2008, reserves were basically zero. They were not ample. They were not abundant. They were scarce. And still, the federal funds rate didn't really move much. January 4th, 1984, the first data point here, we have $22.3 in reserves. And uh, well, September 3rd, 2008, even less, $11.906 billion. So basically zero the entire time. In this deep dive into the murky waters of central banking and financial markets, Rafi Faber critically examines an article from Liberty Street Economics titled When a Central Bank Reserves Ample. The article, authored by four economists, attempts to clarify the concept of ample reserves in the Federal Reserve's monetary policy. However, Faber exposes the flaws in their arguments, warning of the impending financial disaster that is being overlooked by mainstream economists. The concept of ample reserves is central to the Federal Reserve's monetary policy framework, According to the 2019 FOMC announcement, ample reserves are defined by the elasticity of the federal funds rate in response to changes in reserve levels. Faber explains that if the federal funds rate the rate at which banks lend to each other overnight remains stable despite fluctuations in reserves, then reserves are considered ample. However, if the rate responds to changes in reserve levels, it indicates that reserves are not ample. To illustrate this, the article presents a chart showing the relationship between the federal funds rate and reserve levels. When reserves are scarce, the federal funds rate rises sharply, reflecting a high slope on the chart. In contrast, when reserves are ample, the rate increases more slowly, indicating a less steep slope. The authors argue that the goal of the Federal Reserve is to maintain a monetary policy regime of ample, but not abundant, reserves. They warn against both scarce and overly abundant reserves which could lead to instability in the financial system. Faber challenges the premise of the Liberty Street Economics article by pointing out its failure to address the real issue at hand, the $2.2 trillion elephant in the room, namely, the secured overnight financing rate SOFA and its role in the repo market. According to Faber, the article's authors have missed the mark by focusing on technical indicators like late payments, intraday overdrafts, and repo rate pressure while ignoring the massive amount of money circulating in the repo market. Now we'll show you the best clips of the latest interview. But first hit the like button, smash the subscribe button and turn on notifications so you do not miss out our daily recaps. This article here from Liberty Street Economics. So in case you're confused, this is about liberty and we're talking about freedom here and the freedom to have a... Uh, policy rate that won't be affected by the amount of reserves in the system, basically. So we have this title, When Are Central Bank Reserves Ample? Which is ample? Which is ample? By uh, four people here. We have Gera Afonso, Domenico Giannani, Gabriel Espada, and John C. Williams. And there's the Eccles book. Look at that. Isn't it pretty? We have the question, ample reserves and the slope of the reserve demand curve. What does ample reserves mean? Based on this FOMC announcement from 2019, we can interpret the notion of ample reserves in terms of the static, not static, of the elasticity, <laughs> static elasticity, in terms of the elasticity of the federal Fed funds rate, just so you know that federal means Fed. Funds rate to change in changes in the supply of reserves. So basically, if the federal funds rate, the rate at which banks loan to each other, is set by the Federal Reserve every night, if that does not respond to changes in reserves, then reserves are ample. If it changes with respect to reserves, then reserves are not ample. And just to show you, they have this helpful little chart here. This is the federal funds rate, and this is the amount of reserves. If reserves are scarce in this section, the slope is high, meaning as reserves get lower and lower and lower. The federal funds rate goes higher and higher, faster and faster. The slope of the federal funds rate over the reserves amount is very, very high. And ample reserves is over here in the middle where the slope is a little bit less, but it's still negative. 
And so as reserves get scarcer and scarcer towards this side of the curve, that means that the federal funds rate goes slowly higher, but not as high and not as fast as when reserves are scarce. And over here is abundant. And so it doesn't really matter what reserve balances are up to this point. Uh, if reserves are around these levels, then they can be less or more and the federal funds rate will not move. And so what the authors want is to get to ample rather than abundant. They want this monetary policy regime of ample, but not abundant because this is too loose, but they don't want scarce because that's what happened in September 2019. And so they have this new set of indicators that determines when something is ample and when something is abundant, even though the definitions of ample and abundant are basically the same thing. Which is ample. Newspeak, you know, whatever. And so we have this article. It is titled, again, Liberty Street Economics, A New Set of Indicators of Reserve Ampleness. August 14th. This is the day after this article from August 13th with this little chart here. And uh, now we have August 14th, a, a new set of indicators for reserve ampleness. And let's go to these sets of indicators. We're just going to read the bullet points. Uh, and then I'll go into why this is all dumb and how they're missing the $2.2 trillion elephant in the room. And don't say a word about it. But what are these indicators? Late payments. This is how you know when reserves are going from ample to scarce and you have to print more money. So late payments is one indicator. Banks intraday overdrafts, another indicator. Domestic borrowing in the Fed funds market, another indicator. And upward pressure in repo rates is the fourth indicator. And now looking at the suite of measures jointly, we have this Spider-Man graph down here. Uh, this is a very uh, self-explanatory. We have here elasticity and average intraday overdrafts, Fed funds, borrowing, late payments, and uh, look at Spider-Man. If we read the paragraph explaining this Spider-Man chart, following Spider-Web chart shows the four complementary indicators together with the absolute value of our measure of the last yesterday at four different points in time, September 2019, blah, 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 2024. For each indicator, the point of the response, respective axis in the innermost dash pentagon represents the level of most abundant in reserves during 2014, 2024. Here, according to the indicator, that point on the x pentagon corresponds to the bottom of the pentagon. So you got it? Good. Now you can understand why this is all crap. So this is the amount of reserves in the system. We can see here that from 1984, which was a good year for George Orwell, and uh, 2008, September 17th. <laughs> Look at that. It's the same date as the apocalypse. Remember, that was September 17th, uh, 2019. Well, look at this. Well, let's zoom in here in a second. I just found this. Uh, so reserves started to rise from uh, 9 billion, basically zero, to 47 billion on September 17th, 2008. Um, and it was uh, 11 years later that they exploded again because uh, the federal funds rate was out of control. But anyway, let's zoom back out. So we can see here that from 1984, the beginning of this data on this chart, until September 17th, 2008, reserves were basically zero. They were not ample. They were not abundant. They were scarce. And still, the federal funds rate didn't really move much. January 4th, 1984, the first data point here, we have $22.3 in reserves. And uh, what, September 3rd, 2008, even less, 11.906 billion. So basically zero the entire time. Faber argues that the repo market, where banks borrow from each other overnight using treasury securities as collateral, is where the true story of reserve scarcity and financial risk unfolds. He highlights that a significant portion of bank reserves currently over $2.1 trillion is being funneled into the repo market. This enormous volume of overnight borrowing is not mentioned in the article despite its critical importance in understanding the current state of the financial system. Faber delves into the details of the repo market, explaining how the $2.1 trillion being traded nightly is a sign of deeper problems within the financial system. He notes that this borrowing is being used to fund short positions in treasury note futures, a practice known as the basis trade. In this trade, financial institutions short futures contracts while simultaneously buying the underlying securities profiting from the difference in prices. Faber points out that the volume of these trades has reached all-time highs, with record short positions across various treasury maturities, from two-year notes to 30-year bonds. This unprecedented level of shorting, combined with the vast sums of money being borrowed in the repo market, signals an unsustainable situation. The market is teetering on the edge of another crisis similar to the one experienced in September 2019, when the federal funds rate spiked due to reserve scarcity. And so why didn't the Federal Reserve, federal funds rate respond to the amount of reserves in the system? Who knows? But now you need a whole bunch, trillions of dollars in reserves in order for the federal funds rate to stay within range. 
And uh, here is where the federal funds rate uh, started to get out of control in September 2019. It went from whatever it was, 2% to like 6% overnight because there were not enough reserves, even though there were like $1.4 trillion in reserves, but it's not enough anymore. And so the question is, why does the system need all these reserves? Oh, look at this high here, $4.275 trillion in reserves. Uh, and now we're at uh, 3.346 and the Federal Reserve is not sure if $3.346 trillion is ample or abundant or scarce. Maybe $3.3 trillion is scarce now. Well, why would it be scarce? Well, here's what they're not reporting on these stupid articles in Liberty Street Economics. This, my friends, you may have seen before. This is the secured overnight financing volume. This is the repo volume. This is the rate at which banks borrow from each other in exchange for treasury securities. You can see here that we're up to $2.118 trillion a night now. And where's all this money coming from? Where does $2.118 trillion come from? Uh, who is giving it? Who has that extra money? Well, it's coming from those bank reserves that we saw back in this tab over here. Let's go to that tab. $3.346 trillion. That's the amount of bank reserves that uh, banks have in their account balances at the Federal Reserve. And a lot of that money, $2.118 trillion of it, is going into the repo market to be traded between banks in exchange for interest. So why didn't the article mention this big, huge thing of $2.118 trillion? Because it's full of crap. And what are they using this money for? The ones that are borrowing all these trillions of dollars, what are they using it for? Well, we can see the answer to that in this slide. Not this slide, this one's blank. Anyway, two-year treasury note futures. What is this money, $2.18 trillion, being used for? It's being used to short treasury note futures across all maturities from two-year to 10-year. These are the COTs. The blue line is leverage funds. And this is how many contracts they are short. Uh, 2.285972 million contracts. It's an all-time record high. Remember the apocalypse in 2019 when they ran out of money because all of it was being used to uh, do the same thing, to short these treasuries. Um, we'll go back to the volume chart in a second so you can see that volumes in the repo market were also at record highs for that time. Uh, we're way past that now. And uh, the amount of shorts on these treasury notes, which they need money to fund, is long past record highs all time. Faber warns that the Federal Reserve's inability to determine whether $3.3 trillion in reserves is ample, abundant, or scarce is a sign of the fragility of the current financial system. He argues that the system is being propped up by massive amounts of borrowed money, much of which is being used to fund risky trades that could implode at any moment. The failure to address the root causes of these imbalances, such as the repo market's outsized influence, is setting the stage for a financial apocalypse. Faber predicts that the ongoing quantitative tightening where the Federal Reserve reduces its balance sheet by selling off assets will exacerbate these issues. As reserves continue to shrink, the pressure on the repo market will increase, leading to higher borrowing costs and more instability. This, in turn, could trigger another crisis, forcing the Federal Reserve to intervene with another round of massive money printing. We can go to five-year Treasury notes, same thing. Uh, we've gone from uh, almost uh, zero, what is it, 500,000 contracts back here in the beginning of 2023 uh, to now 3.114 million. And this is the beginning of 2024 here. We crossed the 2 million contract uh, line here. And now we're at 3.114. It's just been going more and more and more extreme over the past few months. Uh, we can even go to the 10-year treasuries. And uh, it's also at all-time record highs, the amount of short positions, 2.009 million contracts. Even 30-year tr treasury bond futures are at 497,398. I checked that. It's also an all-time record high. So all of these markets are being shorted uh, at record amounts, and they are playing what is called the basis trade, which I've gone to in previous videos. And I'll put a key or a link or whatever it is to that uh, video over there so you can understand what the basis trade is. Basically, they're selling short futures and buying spot and pocketing the difference. So let's go back to that volume chart. So going back to this chart of SOFR volume of the volume of dollars that are being traded in the overnight market that is being funded by the bank reserves that they want to remain ample or abundant. Uh, we can see here that in September 2019, September around the time of the apocalypse was happening, we had an all time record high in the amount of dollars being borrowed in order to fund the same basis trades that are going on right now. Is there any word about this in any of the articles about ample or abundant or scarce reserves? No. Going into September 2019, we see $1.281 trillion. And if we go to the amount of reserves that existed back then, we zoom into 2019, let's do that. 
And uh, we have here, it was September 2019, September 18th, $1.394 trillion. And we go back here and we see $1.349 trillion, total $1.281, almost all, basically, almost substantially all, like 87%, I think the exact number is, almost all of the amount of reserves in the bank system were being used to fund short positions in the two-year note treasury market and other little uh, short positions uh, that were being traded on the basis trade. So basically, how do we know when reserves are ample? When are they abundant? When are they scarce? When all of the reserves are being used to fund basis trades in the treasury note market, you have scarce reserves. You're going to have another apocalypse. Is there anything about this in any of the articles by those four people on the New York Fed Liberty Street Economics? No, because they're distracting you with spider webs and Spider-Man and all these other cartoons, and they don't know what they're talking about. But what we do know is that the amount of funds being traded in the repo market is growing by the week. The short positions in the treasury note market are growing by the week and quantitative tightening continues. And these trains are on the same track, heading in opposite directions. It's going to lead to another apocalypse, which is going to lead to the final round of money printing, which is going to lead to the death of the dollar because they're going to have to print about three, four, five trillion dollars. Really, what is the difference anymore? Let's just get it over with. So we can move on from this system of corruption and theft and get to something a little bit more stable and moral and less insane.